Hey, Tactical Painter, back out in Suits Crafting Woodshop. Welcome out to Shop Talk Tuesday, Episode 6. So today out in the shop, we've been working on some stuff. Uh, it's been a busy, busy day. We had uh, had four appointments with the family today, and uh, so we've been just go, go, go. And in between then, I've been able to get out here, turn some stuff up on the lathe. I've been doing some uh, bunch of CA glue finishes today, actually. I had six pens that I had to throw a CA glue finish on in order to uh, get them wrapped up for an order so it was uh, they're turning out pretty good love this new glue boost actually let me grab it here pick these up from exotic blanks they've got this stuff it's glue boost and really simple kit so you've got medium and you've got thin and you've got this accelerator and they advertise that they are a non blushing um, CA glue finish and it's flexible any of you guys know that have been doing this for a while, CA glue is an acrylic uh, coating that you can put over top of pens and they leave a glass-like surface protecting your pens, they're waterproof them, and they do all sorts of wonderful, fantastic things. Uh, but the problem that lies within them is that some of them have a long cure time. If you hit it with accelerator, then you get this white, hazy look to them that's awful and it ruins it and you have to sand it all back down, get rid of it, and then hit it again. But this is a non-blushing, non-whiting um, system. Works really well. Second problem that you have with CA glue is that they, if you drop them, the surface of the CA glue can crack. It's hard. It's brittle. Um, you know, it it will give a little bit, but not a whole lot. And once you get a crack in there, it's pretty much ruined. So. Um, this is a flexible finish that they actually use for fixing um, cracks and scratches and things in guitars. It's a wonderful coating and it is one, it's just awesome. I love it. It takes me five minutes where it used to take me an hour of putting on the finish, letting it uh, cure and dry naturally for about 10, 15 minutes, putting on another coating, letting it dry, putting another coat, letting it dry and I would put on two layers of medium and then like seven or eight layers of thin and I've been using this stuff two layers of medium two layers of thin you hit it with the accelerator ten seconds later it's cured you're ready for the next layer it's wonderful it takes me five minutes now whereas it used to take me an hour in order to do a single pen CA finish I got six done in between two different appointments I only had like 30 minutes of working time and I was able to apply the CA finish on six different pens. So love this stuff. It is awesome. If you guys are interested in it, go pick it up and try it out for yourselves. You will be sold on it. It's not a cheap kit. Um, getting all three of them together was $42 I believe. Um, and then you also have to pay for $18 UPS ground shipping but it is worth it. I still use my Type Bond CA glue uh, for gluing in tubes and fixing cracks and repairs and different things like that and I strictly use this for my finish on a lot of my especially hybrid blanks. This is fantastic stuff. Give it a shot. Try it out if you guys uh, are interested and then I'll be running a full review on this coming up in the future because I am sold on this product. Let's see, this week I also got out and did some casting in the shop this week. Got up some um, testing done on, on one more thing that I wanted to kind of figure out before I get going on the Nebula Galaxy style um, cosmic blanks. So I did a test. Um, I have been using the Angelite powder, if you guys will remember. So last week I was doing up this... Uh, pink with uh, angel-like glitter and you can check out the video that I did on that previously uh, making up one of these and the angel-like glitter when I was looking at this I'm going you know those look a lot like star twinkles huh maybe I'll try those out on some uh, galaxy cosmic blanks and so I gave it a shot wanted to see what they turned out like and you know they're not bad they're not bad at all they, uh, they're definitely, the particles are smaller. So they're, they're a little more subdued. They don't stand out quite as well as um, the actual like holographic flakes. So these ones that I talked about last week, 
Um, but you know, they're they're not bad. They work out pretty well. I, I did up this one, which I'm really happy with. This is a three quarter inch by three quarter by five inch blank, and these are uh, dump pour. So I, I cast in black with some flash white dust, and then um, red, blue, and violet interference powders from Perlex powder, and then a blue violet shifting powder from Solar Color Dust, and it looks pretty fantastic. I really happy with with the appearance that I've got in there I, I dump all of those interference um, and uh, shifting resins together and then I dump those into the black and just let it all swirl together and then I cast that away and these turned out pretty great so that was a three-quarter there was one more in here that I was super happy with I, I think I might have to keep it yeah is this one right here check out the colors in that absolutely beautiful love getting the colors and the wisps and everything in there like that and uh, the angelite holographic powder or holographic glitters look really nice they got some nice twinkle and sparkle to them as you move it around so I think it'd be a good substitute and you can get um, from solar color dust the angelite glitter it wasn't very expensive I think it was like 10 grams for 10 bucks so a buck a gram Whereas I picked up these two, both of these combined are one gram for ten bucks. So um, even if and, and these might actually the angelite um, holographic glitters might have been fifteen for ten grams, but still that's a larger value um, than than these holographic flakes. Although the holographic flakes give a better effect, the angelite glitter it's a little less expensive and it works just as well. Um, Solar Color Dust also has glitter called um, what is it? Starlight glitter or star star something? Stardust? I think it's Stardust. And it looks just like the Angelite glitter. I've used that in a previous um, casting that I did that that blue uh, off-center turned hybrid jewelry box. I did that one with the Stardust glitter in there and it looks exactly like the the angelite holographic glitter so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and and these are looking great so I'm gonna be getting these up on my Etsy shop um, but it's gonna wait a little bit because what I'm just put in an order today with P-Town Subby I've got Fred Wisson over there at P-Town Subby um, you know in charge of Fred Wisson designs you can check out his YouTube page um, he does some awesome um, casting molds and so I'm getting some professionally made casting molds and then I'm getting a rack from him as well for going into my my two and a half gallon uh, Harbor Freight converted um, pressure pot and so I'm going to be getting a rack with my logo on the top design him and I've been talking back and forth we're really excited about getting that going and uh, so I'm picking up that from him and that's going to be he said shipped out here in the next couple of days and so really excited to get that in the mail once that gets in I've got some professionally made from him um, four and two uh, blank molds that I'm going to be casting these in so they're gonna be I think they're one inch wide by one inch wide by five and a quarter long so they're gonna be larger than the ones that I'm currently doing I'm currently doing three quarter and five eighths um, but I don't know if you can see that on video here but there is a slight bowing to all of my blanks that are coming out lately and it's really irritating the silicone that I used in order to make this mold it was right on the end of its shelf life and it cured before it had self leveled and so there was a slight dome I tried to cut it off flat and it just keeps causing uh, bent blanks I needed to make a new one I don't have time to make a new one unfortunately um, we're in the middle of training some new people at my office, but you know it takes time to train new officers, and so uh, we're we're kind of working a lot of extra hours, and so I just don't have time to go out and make the molds that I need. I was already going to be ordering a rack from him, and so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to throw on some molds, save myself some time, and then it will be a lot better. Now they did a study a while back on. Um, gratification you know what makes people the happiest and what they discovered was rather interesting so they took 
a large um, random smattering of people, they gave them money. And they said, go out, spend this money on something for yourself. So all these people, they took this money, they went out, spent it on something for themselves. And they reported back how it made them feel, you know, how they liked their decision, what did they decide to buy for themselves. You know, people bought, um, you know, just a nice meal for themselves. Some people bought stuff for their house. Some people bought stuff, you know, new clothes and things. So it was a random smattering of people that bought a random smattering of just different items, just depending on what they thought was going to make them happy. And then they came back a week later and said, okay, how do you feel about the item that you purchased? And, you know, they, they found out that information. And then the next test they did, they, they gave the people money, and half the group, they said, go out and buy something for yourself. Half, the other half of the group, it said, go out and buy buy something that's going to save yourself some time. And what they found was the people that went out and just bought something for themselves, they were happy for a very short period of time until the effect of the chemicals that your body releases when you get something new, that excitement, wore off. And it wore off pretty quickly. But the people that bought something that saved them time, whether it be a maid service, somebody to come in, clean their house, um, you know, do chores, dishes, you know, whatever it was, it was something that saved them time somewhere in their lives. They put that onto somebody else so that they could do the things that they wanted to do. Those people were a lot happier for weeks afterward. Not just a, a day or two with the, like the people that just bought something just for themselves. The people that bought something to save themselves time were happy for weeks afterward. So, that's kind of what I do sometimes. So like these molds, I'm buying something right now that's going to save me time later so I can get out and do what I actually want to do. And that's casting blanks, turning them up, and getting them out to you guys. That's what I want to do. What I don't want to be doing, sitting down, making molds, and sometimes they don't turn out, and that's frustrating because that's wasted time. And I do not like to waste time. So I'm doing something, saving myself some time, having them done by a professional, and it's going to save me time and it's going to bring me happiness because then I can do what I actually want to do. I had a guy a while back, um, those of you don't know actually, I'm also a leather worker. Um, my logo is the four craftings that I do. I am a calligrapher, I do leather working, I'm a painter, and I do uh, wood crafting. So those are the four crafts that I'm mainly based in. Lately, what's been paying a lot of the bills is the wood crafting. The, the pen turning and stuff has been paying a lot of the bills. And it's what I love to do the most. It's, it's something fast, simple, once you get used to it. It's simple. And uh, once you can deal with the heartache of something grenading on you, uh, you know, it's, it's a great craft to get into. But I had a buddy that noticed one time, I pulled out my wallet and... I pulled it out and it's just kind of this junky old little wallet and I paid for something and then I put it back into my pocket and he looks at me and he's like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, what? So I'm, he's like, you got a pen on you, right? And it's like, yeah. So I pull out my pen. I've got it right here. I've always got a pen on me, you know? And he's like, you got a pen on you so that way you can sell your crafts, right? I'm like, well, yeah. He goes, what was that wallet? Bring that back out here. So I pull my wallet back out and I'm like, what's wrong with my wallet? I was like, it's a wallet. And he goes, where did you get that? I was like, I bought it at Fred Meyer's. It's just a standard wallet, you know, 15 bucks. And he's like, why don't you make yourself a nice wallet? You know, you're a leather worker. You should be carrying your own products. That way you could show it off to people. And it's like, and I got to thinking about it. And so I told him, I was like, I'm not going to do that. Because a wallet actually takes me a lot of time to make. It's a lot of hand stitching. takes a lot of time. And so it's pulling me off from doing other stuff. You know, I can make a pen, you know, real fast and simple. It takes me an hour total time between, you know, gluing, turning, polishing, and assembly. You know, an hour total time, but you're talking about making a wallet, and you're talking four or five hours worth of time, but I could make multiple pens in that same amount of time. And so I just told him, I was like, you know, I, I haven't made a wallet for myself. I've made plenty of wallets for other people, but if I sit down and make a wallet for myself, then that is wasted time that I could be out making profits 
instead of just making something to have showy and flashy. So I stuck with my junky, probably a seven-year-old, eight-year-old wallet at this point, um, and and it's been working for me just fine. I don't have my own wallet that I carry with me, uh, my own design that I have up on my Etsy page. No, I just carry this wallet and it works out for me just fine because usually I'm not pulling out my wallet to show people. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't pull out my wallet to show people, hey, I sell these wallets, check them out. You know, that's not something that I would do. I can show them pictures of wallets that I've made for other customers and they're pretty happy with those. So I, I just stick with that. But uh, yeah, he was really surprised by that. But it's like, it's something that saves me time. And yeah, sure, I'm not carrying my own product, you know, in my, in my pocket with my money and stuff in it. But it's not time wasted just to have something to show. I may lose a few sales because I don't have something to actually show a person, unlike a pen where you pull out a pen, you let somebody write with it, and they go, oh, that's nice. Because, you know, getting an item into a person's hand that's 60% of your sale. You can get an item into a person's hand and they write with it, they use it, they admire it, and they're looking at it. 60% of your sale is done. The other 40% is convincing them that's something that they need. You just gotta get into their head. You're already 60% of the way there. You just gotta push them the rest of the way to get them to pull out their own wallet and pay you for it. So that's why I love pens because they're fast, simple, they're easy to turn once you get used to it and you get the equipment, um, but you can get it into their hands really easy. It's not easy to get a wallet into somebody's hands and make them consider it because it's a larger item, but I can carry a pen right here in my pocket, quick and simple, and then you hand it to them, they sign a document, and they go, wow, that's nice. In fact, I had like uh, six people just last Friday that I handed them my pen, they signed it, wow, that's nice. Here's a business card. You know, you, people love to have a nice pen that's their own. You know, they they grab and buy cheap pens all the time. They use cheap pens all the time. But when you get a nice pen in your hand, you feel it. You know it's a nice pen. You you feel something good about it. And and it's, it's a wonderful thing to see occur in a person because you just handed it to them to sign, but all of a sudden, like, it slows them down. You can see time slow down in a person when they pick up that pen, they sign with it, they feel how smooth it writes, and they go, wow, that's nice. Because they were in a rush, rush, rush stage. They were in their own head. They were doing something. They were trying to just grab a package and go. And, and then all of a sudden, like, you just watch time slow down, and they stop, and they admire your work. And they see that pen, and they go, that's nice. Where'd you get that? And I go, well, actually, I made that last week. And they go, you did what? You made that last week? What do you mean you made that? And then we talk about it. We talk about the color choices that I had go into it. We talk about the processes that I go through in order to turn it up. And they're amazed because they didn't know that was something that could be done. And you're well on your way to making a sale. You get a business card, something tangible they can remember that with, and that sticks with them. And then the next time that they go... I need a gift for somebody, where's that guy's business card or where can I find them? Then they go and they find you, they track you down, they say, hey, I need three pens made for people by next week and I go, whoa, I can do that. And it's a great feeling. Well, there's a little philosophy for you. So, gonna be getting some molds out. I know I went way off tangent there, but I'm getting some professional molds made. They're gonna be showing up here real soon. Once that's done, I'm gonna start selling these pen blanks off to you guys so that way you can get your hands on them and start making your own pens with them and, and start creating some of that business for yourself. Something else that I'm gonna start doing here real soon, and actually I'm probably gonna throw these up on the website as well. These, I got these cast up at the same time that I did the pen blanks. These are two bottle stoppers, and they're kind of rough on the top right now, but the sides look fantastic. They've got really good colors on them. Uh, this is the same Angelite uh, holographic glitter in there, and then the blue, uh, purple, violet uh, interference powders, and then the blue, violet shifting powders. So at different angles, um, some of the blues that are in there actually change color from blue to violet and they are really fantastic and these turned out really great really happy with how those colors are and I've turned up a bunch of these blanks and I'll throw some pictures up um, right over here 
so that you guys can check them out. These make wonderful bottle stoppers. Um, the black with the flash white in there creates like these sections of these bands of stars within the blank. And then the colors make wonderful nebulas and cosmic ethereal uh, effects and things. And so these are absolutely wonderful bottle stoppers. They're really cool. They sell really well. Um, these were the ones that I did over the holiday season. Um, all I did was put pictures of these blocks up and I already had 11 sold by the end of that day. So, and they weren't even made yet. They were like, I want 11 of those. And I was like, uh, I only just have these two. And they're like, well, cast me up some more. I want 11 of those for Christmas. And so we did that and it was fantastic. I was really happy to get that sale and I had to go back out in the shop and remember how I replicated that. So it turns out really well, but I'll be throwing these two up on the Etsy site. You guys can come check that out. Um, I'll get the top all cleaned off and get the little um, lip that's on there taken care of. It's really simple to turn the bottle stoppers. You guys never turned one before. Really, really super easy. Find the center, drill a uh, 11 30 seconds inch hole, get a, what is it, uh, three... 3 8 or a 3 16 tap. Get the tap that goes into the bottle stopper and then you tap that hole out. You have to drill it down about 3 quarters of an inch. Tap it down until you reach the collar and then turn it up to whatever design you want. And, and I, did, I did 11 of those last holiday season and they turned out really great and the customer was really happy with them and personally I was really satisfied with them. They were just beyond what I even expected for them to turn out like. They were so cool. They were fantastic to look at. Awesome colors. And so I'm going to start throwing those up at random um, whenever I decide to go out and get some done. And then if you guys want more of them, just contact me and I'll be happy to make up batches of them for you. As well, out in the shop, I've also picked up a whole bunch of uh, these. These are... Uh, I picked up actually huge boards of this stuff. This is spalted maple. So I picked up a bunch of these boards from a guy locally here in Sherwood. A bunch of spalted maple. And these are fantastic. They've got a mixture of the actual maple burl um, in there. And then the spalting in there. You can see these light sections. Uh, that's spalted wood. So what that is is that's wood rot essentially. And then the rotting wood... Um, creates these black lines that cut all through the blank and make all these really wonderful and awesome effects and they make great pens. If you guys want some of these, I can throw some of, some of them up on the site. I'll get some pictures of the, well, this one taken and throw them up on the site. I did stabilize all of them. So they're stabilized spalted maple burl. And the actual um, maple burl is kind of like a an orangey amber color. It's not like normal maple where it's it's white. You know, it's it's um, you know here's here's a piece of maple there. So that's that's maple wood. You know, it's it's a really light uh, white off yellow off white color. You know, um, but this has kind of like a an orangey um, amber color to it, and it's really beautiful stuff. It's really fantastic. And then of course you've got the burl in there that creates all of those lovely bird's eyes and then it creates the waves of light that, that catch the light and stuff and it's it's absolutely wonderful stuff so I'm gonna throw those up on the site if you guys want some of those I'll, uh, I'll be selling those as well because uh, I bought a whole bunch of them to make up just a few of them and then I got really excited I was like these things are so cool I want more and so I bought um, I did a bundle uh, shipment from the guy. Instead of just getting one and paying for the shipping, I bundled them and got four of them at the same time. Um, these big pieces, they were like 15 inches long, like two and a half inches thick, eight inches wide, and cut them all down into pen blanks. And then I've got some of them that I'm saving for, for some larger projects that I'm, I'm cooking up in my head for the future. And so if you guys are interested, come check those out. All right, well, I think that's about enough of me rambling on for this Shop Talk Tuesday, Episode 6. So if you guys are interested in any of that stuff, be sure to come by my Etsy shop. I appreciate you guys coming in here, checking in with me each week. Um, I was really surprised we went out to dinner with a, uh, some friends of ours. And uh, my buddy asked, he's like, so, how are pen sales going? And his daughter actually, like, she stopped what I was saying. I was about to say, it's going really well, things are going great. And she just looks at him and she goes, 
don't you watch his YouTube? He's doing great. <laughs> and so it was, it was so funny. So come to find out, my buddy's daughter uh, watches my YouTube updates. So if you're out there, Tara, thank you so much for checking out uh, all my, my videos. That meant so much to me. It, I, you know, I was very humbled by it, and uh, I loved it. It was so funny. Uh, but thank you guys so much for joining me out in the shop this week. I'm going to go and cut it out, get some stuff done here on the lathe, get this video up. And it's probably going to be up by midnight, Tuesday, so going into Wednesday. But, uh, yeah, it's been a busy day, and uh, I'm going to hit the, the sack here soon. So thanks so much for joining me out in the shop here, you guys. Uh, you have a wonderful rest of your week. We're going to be getting some videos out later this weekend, um, including this pen that I've been showing you here in my pocket. We're going to be showing you guys that one and then showing you how to convert this type of pen to take the G2 conversion because I haven't gotten that video out yet so I know you guys are interested in that. So thanks again, this is Tactical Painter out at the Suits Crafting Woodshop, signing out.